five, four, three, two, one. Roll pass forward track. So I'm going to move on camera four. Ready, Mike, to cue him on camera four, and then we'll go to camera one. Ten away from studio. Five away. Start your move four. IQ. Hi, everybody. I'm Ready Bill one. Welcome to Around the Mountain, brought to you by Take one. Let me just warn you, folks, right off the top, 32. if you don't like football, you don't like talking about the NFL draft and guys with opinions about the BCS realignment and other college football matters, then this might not be the show for you, but stick around anyway Take. because Ready, CG your birthday one. boy Ted Sunquist is joining us, as is Reggie Rivers. I'm, I'm not into football. I'm <laughs> I said stick around because you're here, as is Mike Evans. Each one of these guys is a Mountain football Wipe. analyst. Okay, here is the rundown today. We're going to recap the Mountain West place in the NFL draft. Twelve were selected. Lucky why I didn't think more? he'd live there. And speaking of that, why not Kellen Moore? The all-time winningest quarterback in college football history went undrafted. Why is that? And conference realignment is back in the headlines. And it looks like Utah State and San Jose State are headed to the mountain. Dissolve. But let's begin with the NFL draft, which has become really Ready, a football CG1. season. All Wife CG1. Show. We anticipate Music. it for months. Then it rolls around for three days. Everybody's excited about it. And then we debate it afterward. Now, 12 Mountain West alums were drafted, two in the first round. Most of the others went in Ready day four. three in the later rounds. And really, that's kind of become the pattern for the Mountain West over the years. Shane McClellan was the first pick. He Went to the Chicago Bears. All right, in the disregard first that. Round. Ready gold. His stock rose dramatically, Ted, over the last few months leading into the draft. Roll gold. Perhaps take. Any other player that got taken. Put it over third. Yeah, it really Time did. And I think it's because of his versatility as a football player. Everything that he did for the Broncos. Look at him right there, dropping into coverage. A little tight on three, please. Snatching it. He's a very quick guy on the line of scrimmage. Okay. A threat off the edge as a pass rusher. He is an outside. Ready to stop camera three. three. Scheme. He's probably going to play with his hand down out in Chicago in a four three, but he. He brought that versatility, which a yep, lot of I just players that. coming out of college is all now three. are kind of becoming Step specialists. Step it over third, Ted, if you got it. A rush in or an outside got linebacker, in. but there are very few that can do both. This is a guy who's got the speed and quickness, athleticism, and right out, ready for a linebacker, as well as that first step quickness and power that you need in defense. Take four. Yeah, he's, ready a, two. he's a guy who's 260 pounds, two. ran a 4 6 ready three, three in the 40 yard dash three. at the combine. That's Step pretty fast. Third, and so, in. you know, he has a lot of speed. He's ha he has a great motor. They're going to line him up opposite of Julius Peppers up there, and it'll help and it Peppers out. get freed up. You won't get double ready teamed four. on every play. He's a guy that I think is going to be a lot like Jared Allen in terms of just his effectiveness on the field, the motor that he has, the ability as, as he has. I think he's a lot to be a, a starter in the Take NFL four. and a very effective player. And, Mike, if you're a football traditional you've got the chicago one, bears the monsters of the midway uh a guy named butkus played up, linebacker one, there mike tighter. singletary brian urlacher if you're a linebacker and you get drafted by the bears they're on the other end of the phone in the first round three. this has to be a Ten huge thrill for a guy like mcclellan Take three. I mean, we always talk about with, with quarterbacks third, oh it would be a great situation for this guy to go to this place to get a chance to learn from this guy why can't that apply right for, for defensive players as well? Why can't a guy? Take five. Why, why can't, they're, they're not very smart. Right, right. They don't have the capacity to learn. Right. Take saying. three. But why not have 34. a chance to be able to go to a place like Chicago, soak up everything? I'd want to be a sponge around uh, Brian Erlacher. And, and why can't that apply for defensive players as well? Take four. and welcome to another edition of Round the Mountain brought to you by Jeep, the weekly show where we let sports journalists sound off on topics affecting the Mountain West Conference. I'm your host, Marius Payton. On the show today in studio from 102.3 ESPN Denver, we have Nate Kreckman. We also have the voice of the Rams, Mr. Brian Roth in the house. And joining us from the campus cam from KRQE TV in Albuquerque is my man, Van Tate. Here's what we're talking about for the next 30 minutes. The Mountain West Conference has accepted two new members, Utah State and San Jose State are the newbies how does that affect the league going forward we will discuss also the bcs is exploring a four-team playoff will it happen and if it does what took so long and finally colorado state puts its foot down and expels three football players we'll take a closer look at how that will affect the rams as the season nears now we start with conference expansion utah state and san jose state are the newest members of the mountain west the conference had to make a move and the aggies and spartans were i guess the next two whack teams to make the 
jump to the Mountain West. Yeah, if you uh, would have said three years ago, hey, listen, we're going to make our conference stronger by adding Utah State and San Jose State, you would have laughed and said, yeah, that's going to make the conference a lot weaker. It's going to make it more watered down. But here we are in May of 2012, and it's a legitimate point. They are making it stronger, and the reason why, it's because it's numbers. Go ask the WAC if they want to be stronger just based upon numbers because they have two football-playing schools left in Idaho and New Mexico State. So just, just by sheer numbers to replace the two teams that, that they're losing in San Diego State and Boise State and bring in two more teams, it's not like they're going out and getting Oklahoma and USC. Those were probably the last two remaining teams that fit the footprint of the Mountain West Conference. But does it make it stronger, Nate? I mean, football-wise. No, it doesn't. It's it's survival mode. You're losing two programs in Boise State and San Jose State, or excuse me, San Diego State, uh, who has become a national power. Boise State, we know what they are, all right? Uh, these are two good football programs that you're losing. San Jose State, Utah State, we know what those uh, what those programs are, what those schools are, but let's face it, uh, part of this is A, survival, you want to maintain 10 members, and, and, and B, uh, you get a decent television market in the Bay Area, uh, Utah State, Northern Utah, okay, you got a touch of Salt Lake City, uh, obviously having lost Utah and BYU from the conference, that was rough on, uh, on television, so it, it's good in that regard. Now, granted, these aren't the biggest schools in those respective markets, but it's survival mode, and hey, <laughs> credit. Greg Thompson is uh, he's keeping the Mountain West afloat all of the expense of the Western Athletic Conference. Van, you've been around the conference for, for a while, as have I. Is the Mountain West starting to look a lot like the WAC? Just the uh, same same thing, different name, huh? <laughs> it's like it's like they flip flop names, you know. But you know, you you take Utah State, San Jose State, and Utah State you got a football program that seems to be on the rise and basketball is not so bad you got student moral over there and, and and he's known to put up wins so i don't know if it's going to be so horrible to have those two teams come in but like you said marius i mean it just looks like the whack with a different name and it, it, if you had said this a few weeks back it would be unbelievable people would say oh no that's not going to happen but with the shifting landscape and conferences because of all this college football money just stay tuned. We don't know what we're going to see next. And what's what's the other alternative at this point for the Mountain West? You just going to stay at eight? Everything? No, they had to do it. Yeah, no, no, I, I know they did. But I mean, again, are, what are the other alternatives out there? And there are no really other alternatives. But to try to strengthen by numbers, as Nate said, it's survival mode right now right. For, for Craig Thompson and the Mountain West Conference. So are they waiting for San Diego State and Boise State to come back, or to, to pick up Idaho and New Mexico State? <laughs> I, well, I think the you know the, the possibility of Boise State and San Diego State, you know, once we figure out what's happening with automatic qualifying, once we figure out what's going to happen uh, with the Big East television deal, is there a possibility that Boise State and San Diego State are going to look at their current situations and say, hey, the grass wasn't necessarily greener? Like a week ago, the Mountain West had three men's teams in the national polls for the first time this season, but the most competitive race of the, the conference has ever had took its toll on that breakthrough, while UNLV and San Diego State both went 2-0 to stay in the top 25s. New Mexico State was short-lived. Two losses relegated the Lobos to the rankings purgatory known as receiving votes. And it should be a surprise to no one that those same three teams sit atop the Mount West standings. All three are tied with records of 8-4 and four in league play. Here's where the surprise comes in. TCU is just a game out of first place, followed by CSU, Wyoming, Air Force, and Boise State, with just two more games to be played. If you look at where we're at right now, it's probably, you know, we'd like to be a lot higher. And then we look back and, and there's a couple games that we think we might, might, have, be, might have been able to uh, to pull out and uh, you know you can't really dwell on that um, we've had a great season so far and um, you know we're gonna keep looking ahead but uh, you know like we said uh, wherever we're gonna be placed in the in the tournaments uh, wherever we're gonna be placed so it hasn't been perfect but it has been a very good season for Wyoming the same could be said for TCU the Cowboys are on the verge of a 20 win season while the Frogs have hopped into the mix of five teams that have a shot at the title heading into the final week of the regular season those two teams meet tonight in Laramie at 730 in game two of our double header on the mound. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Mountain Sports Report presented by Dodge, the conference tournament just around the bend and teams are jockeying for posi position heading down the home stretch. My Never thought I'd be in you know, Colorado, but you know, 
I'm happy I'm here. Ronnie Hillman elected to leave San Diego State after two years to take his chances at the NFL, and it appears that that decision has paid off. Hillman was drafted in the third round by the Denver Broncos, where he'll compete in the backfield with the aging Willis McGahee and Noshawn Moreno, who has been a disappointment since being taken in the first round two years ago. Hillman's teammate at San Diego State quarterback Ryan Lindley got the call as well. He was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in the sixth round, 185th overall. Lindley will be in a pretty good good spot. He's playing behind Kevin Cobb, who has just five years experience. Other quarterbacks on the roster, John Skelton and Richard Bartell. Kellen Moore may have ended his Boise State career as the winningest quarterback in college football history, but that must not have impressed the pros. Moore endured a three-day free fall all the way out of the draft and into free agency. It didn't take long for him to land, though. Shortly after the draft ended, Moore signed a free agent deal with the Detroit Lions. Hi, folks. With Marius Payton, I'm Bill Dolman. The draft is over, and now the debating begins. Which team did the best? Who were the steals? Which players will have an immediate impact? Those questions and more will tide us over right up until training camp in July. Although the surgeon did not hear his name called on Saturday, a bunch of other players were lucky enough to live the NFL draft dream. Rounds three through five were pretty good to players in the Mountain West. Six players got the call to play on Sundays. Miles Burris gets to leave San Diego and go to play in Oakland for the Raiders. TCU linebacker Tank Carter is headed to uh, Buffalo. And the Boise State safety George Aloka is now a member of the Cincinnati Bears. Bengals. In the later rounds, the league saw four more players go to the league. Billy Wynn of Boise State is now a Cleveland Brown. TCU's Greg McCoy is a member of the Chicago Bears. He should do well there. And in what was probably a surprise to many, Boise State offensive lineman Nate Potter was taken in the seventh round to Arizona. Many expected him to go a lot sooner. The draft pretty much played out according to script for the Mountain West, although while first rounders have been rare, this year there were two, both Broncos Goes. The rest of the rounds went according to average, with M-Dub alums filling out draft cards instead of topping the list, especially on Saturday when eight were taken. However, don't tell Ronnie Hillman that this was an ordinary draft. Once you start seeing, you know, five running backs go, you know, in front of you, it's like, you know, I make the right decision. You kind of like, oh, I might get pushed back a little bit, or you, know, you just get a little nervous. So, uh, you know, I found myself walking around, not trying to watch the draft. You know, every now and then I hear, you know, somebody else get picked. But when I got the call, I was just like, you know, just, I was excited. A shakeup in the world of swimming coming up, plus news on Jordan Gross, Tony Gwynn, and Steven Strasburg. But let's start with football. That's going to be our focus for the entire month of August and beyond. From the studios of the Mountain, with Marius Payton and Bill Dolman. This is the Mountain View, presented by Dodge. As great a year as Utah had in 2008, it was just as bad a finish for BYU. The Cougars were 6-0 at one point, 10-1 near the end, and then they lost their last two, including that blowout loss to the Utes. Max Hall had six turnovers that day, and the quest for perfection went down in flames once and for all. And if you think Hall has forgotten how that season ended, he hasn't. You know, we've talked about this a bunch and how uh, our, the excitement wasn't there, the, the uh, passion, motivation to... Uh, to grind and to finish the season out wasn't wasn't where it needed to be, and so um, we've put a lot of emphasis on on that in the off season, and preparing ourselves to uh, to not only start the season fast but to push through and hopefully end the season uh, better than we did last year. How much during this off season have you looked back on those games at the end of last season, and 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 how much of an impact have they had in terms of you talked about pressure going into last year? How much has that helped maybe make you more comfortable going into this year? It does because uh, I think it was good for our team, as weird as this, as weird as this sounds, uh, to lose a few games. Uh, I think we got comfortable with where we were at and uh, kind of put the thing in cruise control. So uh, with how we ended the season, it's definitely motivating. It's something we think about every day. 
uh, but it, we, don't, we don't really try to dwell on it. We just use it as motivation to prepare ourselves better for the upcoming season. All right, big news this week in swimming as FINA banned those expensive swimsuits everyone has been using. They help you go much faster, and records have been falling like crazy. The ban will extend to college, too. In fact, there's already an NCAA proposal to change what kind of suits are allowed. They'll vote on that next month, and the changes will take effect this coming season. Here's Wyoming coach Tom Johnson with our Natalie Vickers.